ever in the women's scene. It sucks, but everyone played really good. Really, like, yeah, to yeah. It's hard not to be disappointed, but you gotta just keep moving forward, keep getting better. It was a strange year for us. <laughs> we made a lot of change, but I think it's ending well. <laughs> uh, not now, not now. I'm just mad at the whole thing being so hard. Don't push other people, don't do my job. 100% a very turbulent year, to be honest. Everyone is getting really close to us, but let me tell you this. We never gonna lose until we stop playing Counter-Strike. This game. It's about time they lost, you know? Just watching so many new teams, new players and new fans get involved throughout the course of the year. You see them all on social media, you see everyone rallying behind it. That gets me really excited because that's what we do this job for. It's why we watch Counter-Strike, it's for that passion. And we've got to see it just grow over the course of the year. I tried. I tried why I did everything again. ESL Impact is brought to you by Intel, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, 1XBet, and White Market. Welcome everybody to ESL Impact Season 5. We are already here into week 3. That means we're slowly marching closer towards the halfway point. So from here on out, it's going to be really exciting to see how the season's going to pan out. Now, Affinity, how are you feeling? What are you looking forward to uh, today? Oh, I am looking forward to it all because not only do we have a fire matchup as well, we've got a whole day of fire matchups. As you can see here, we are starting off with Astralis versus Guild. Moving on later, you will be watching Furia versus Atrix Esports. And then a battle of the Titans, Shimmer versus Team Karma in North America as well. Both of those teams off the back of land, so they are fired up at the moment. So a whole day of back to back to back incredible matches. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, maybe a little biased towards uh, EU here. Um, but it's yeah, we, we can take a look at the standings because it's been a very interesting season thus far. Uh, I will have to say the favorites at the moment are leading the pack, Team Pigeons, who is, of course, ex Nigma Galaxy. Two, um, two wins and zero losses, as is Na'Vi. But Team Spirit yesterday pulled off a very incredible win as well. So they are right behind Na'Vi in uh, Group B. They are indeed, they are indeed. And it's anyone's game really at the moment. As you said, we are into week three, so we're starting to approach that halfway mark, but still not enough data to go on yet to see who we will be seeing, of course, progress on. But it's looking promising for a couple of these teams. Unfortunately, two of the teams that we're watching today here, right here in Europe, is um, they're down at the lower end as well. They are both 0 and 1 at the moment. So this is really to decide who pushes themselves up even and who unfortunately falls a little bit further, has to climb that little bit harder as well if they want to secure a spot at, of course, DreamHack Dallas later in the year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it, it's only the beginning. So with a loss, we know that teams can definitely still make it. But now that they are facing off against one another, that means there's even more pressure because one loss you can maybe afford, but two and especially two in a row to start off your season, uh, it's a it's quite a tough pill to swallow and uh, yeah, a tough task to try and recover from that. So what's interesting about these teams as well is they've played each other before. Now before I spoil how that went, actually, 
Use in the Twitch tag hashtag AST if you're rooting here for Astralis, if you think maybe they've got a little bit of an edge here. Or hashtag GUI for Guild as well. A team that we both actually personally watched, uh, I believe, was it last week, week before? Was uh, mm -hmm. the game that we actually casted together, wasn't it? So, uh, yeah. You guys vote, you guys decide as well. I believe those all important channel points, as long as you're not, of course, uh, sharing a country with Vilas here, you will be able to bet those channel points on who you think as well. <laughs> Raise the stakes just a little bit, you know? Channel points mean a lot to a lot of people, me included, you know? Yeah, yeah, my, my country is unfortunately griefing me, but uh, that, that is what me. it is. Um, but yeah, let's let's look into this veto, because I think this is where things could potentially get uh, very interesting. Oh, we can... We can guess, we've been told. We can, so, I, our production is telling us to so, guess. Now, okay, so, so what do you think? I mean, okay, I mean, Instabans, we kind of know, right? Vertigo will be banned by Guild, and mm. Inferno should be banned by Astralis, but last week they picked it against Bigger Keeper, which, True. I'll be honest with you, didn't go well. Um... Ooh, oh, we got one of them, right? Vertigo. Vertigo yeah, banned okay. instead. Vertigo banned for, for banned. Guild. And Mirage. Yeah, it, it sort of, it depends a bit on who Astralis is playing against. Like, it, it, they're trying to sort of see where perhaps there's a bit of a, a hole in the defense of their opponent uh, instead. So uh, Mirage is, mm, is a bit shaky for, for Guild. Um, so maybe that's... Uh, uh, or actually, no, it's actually relatively well played for kill. So maybe that's why uh, they chose to mm, ban that. Possibly, yeah. They, yeah, they have a bit of a wider pool, um, perhaps, of, of maps they like. So a bit, a bit more them. flexible. Astralis have quite a wide selection that they pick from, but I have a feeling they might lean towards mm. Overpass, uh, especially since it's something they guild ban a lot. For Guild, I think they might pick into Anubis. So I think we might see Overpass and Anubis. Potentially Ancient coming out from either of these teams. Ancient Ooh. Anubis, there we go. We're good, we're yeah. getting half of them. We'll take 50%. We'll take 50% here. Yeah, yeah. I, I was about to say, this could almost be either way. Both teams have played a, a ton of, uh, of Ancient as Anubis. We'll have to say, I think Guild has a bit better results on it. Um, mm. But it, it's a little 50-50. Little I think like this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Even, you know, reverse sweep could be potential here coming into the mix. Now, what do we reckon here for second? Last ban. Um, I think it would be really smart of Guild to, to ban Overpass. It is a map that Astralis have very clearly shown um, a propensity to pick, uh, even float sometimes as well. But they played it a lot and with really good results. Uh, so I think it would be smart to ban Overpass. And then on the side of Astralis, Maybe I, reckon, oh, I don't know. Uh, no, maybe Inferno. Inferno Van and then yeah, Inferno but then Van. float nuke. All right, oh, well, it is floating nuke. Yeah. Look at you All right, go. Well, here, it, yeah. <laughs> that I was mean, incredible. yeah. I think this is fair. Uh, we've seen Astralis float nuke quite a lot. Um, now they haven't really played it as much, but they won, for example, against Forza Ladies, uh, which was back in the open qualifier here for this season. Um, so overall, Astralis is feeling pretty good on that map. Uh, Guilt. I don't think we have much statistics on them at all on, on nukes, so that's going to be interesting if we do end up going through maps. They that's, of course, uh, haven't played you know, always what we have to want much. Though. You're right. They haven't played nuke much. They didn't play in the qu Open Qualifier. They didn't play in Trade It League FE Masters. They didn't play in the Cash Cup they were in. They haven't played it uh, thus far in, well, the one series that they've played in Impact either. You're right. We've got nothing to go on for nuke for them, but that makes them dangerous because we don't know how they're going to be on nuke. So, you know, yeah. who knows? They might come out all guns are blazing. If they win the knife round as well for the decider, start on CT side, they could just shoot off into the sunrise. For sure. For sure. Well, let's talk about Astralis then. You yes. know, this is a team that unfortunately wasn't with us last season. They failed to qualify. But now they've brought in these two young guns. Um, quite literally the young stars so both of them being 16 years old uh, and from what we know uh, i've sp spoken to the girls a little bit um is that already within this scene within the danish scene they wanted to create a danish roster um and these two players sort of caught their eye so they asked them to trial and they were very much impressed by both of their skills so now they're here immediately jumping into ESO impact with two brand new players into the mix. This is very exciting and their ratings are not... They're not to be taken lightly. It's uh, it's an interesting one. Um, Astralis and all Danish rosters, you know, name a more iconic duo. But I'm really excited to see how they perform on the server. 
Uh, I haven't had the chance really to see them much, actually. Uh, they've had some mixed bag results. Uh, actually, fun fact, they were eliminated in open qualifier number one by Guild themselves. So this is a little bit of a revenge match. Of course, they qualified in open qualifier number two. And, uh, you know, the map Vito is looking very different to how they last played. Maybe that plays in their favor a little bit. The only overlapping map we'll see is Anubis being played again, which was, of course, the decider map. And unfortunately, they did lose the series 2-1, or should I say 1-2. But um, as you can see, they look pretty happy already. They look pretty uh, confident going into this as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I, I spoke to the girls. They said they were confident. They feel that they can take this. Um, but... We do have to acknowledge that they are still really yet to prove themselves. Uh, last season, of course, they weren't with us. And now, I mean, they had a bit of a rough start, uh, I would have to admit. That was against Bigger Keeper, a team mm. who potentially could be taking it all here within the season. Um, so maybe not the easiest of starts, but, you know, that means that now the pressure is on. It is indeed, it is indeed, and as you said, Bigger Keeper, definitely a, a difficult team to go up against. And talking of that, you can see the chair in the background there, actually, perfect timing. But uh, we're going to be moving on to Guild. Is there anyone that you uh, remember specifically from the last series that you are really excited to watch on the server again? Yeah, so back in our previous time that we watched Guild, you know, we were highlighting D7. She's on top of the scoreboard most of the times, I would have to say. But one player that stood out to me maybe even more was Kit Kat. I feel she's a very underrated player, a player we often overlook. Um, and her rating was equally good, if not even better, in that specific matchup against Enzathena. Uh, now, Guild did struggle even with some of the, their players really popping off in the server. They did um, end up losing that first matchup, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, as far as individuals go, I feel like Guild has everything what it takes. Um, it just needs to be a bit more cohesive. Absolutely. We did struggle to see them find their footing um, on the maps as well that we watched them play, you know, sometimes having a little bit of a slower start. Hopefully we can see that uh, sort of curse broken a little bit here. We can see them hit the ground running, but I don't know. They're, they're looking pretty set. They're looking locked in. There's I think there's a very di big difference between what we saw from the cameras of those two teams is the Stralis, they were looking really happy. Their big smiles on their face. Uh, whereas Guild, they look a little bit more focused on this one. As we yeah. said, stakes are high for both of these teams, but it's time for us to predict, put our money where our mouths are. Who yeah. are you giving this series to? Oh, I feel this could go pretty much either way. I think the veto favors Astralis just a tad bit. I think, uh, especially, I think we very well could be going to a third map. And if we go to a third, I think Nuke will be going the way of Astralis. So that will be my vote. But I do think it's going to be extremely close. I like to play bad cop, but unfortunately on this one, I'm going to have to agree with you. I do unfortunately see Astralis taking this. Their map pool just fits this a little bit nicer. If we do see that third decided map, which we very well could, we have nothing to go on for Guild in, in recent history. And I can't in good faith, you know, put my confidence there, especially when we do have some sort of stats to go on for Astralis. Um, I'll try to pull it up here and see uh, how they've done recently on Nuke because it's a map that they're quite happy to play actually. They're very happy to float it. Um, 39 in open qualifier number one, 13 1 in open qualifier number two. It's just really good results. So, ooh, yeah. I like this, however. Yeah, Twitch is uh, pretty even on this one. I mean, I think this very well could be quite an even matchup. Mm. Um, but yeah, we have to wait and see uh, which which side of Twitch uh, will be right at the end of the day. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think there's a reward other than the channel points. We could give you pretend cookies. Um, maybe a pretend <laughs> medal. We can. Um, I'm British. I could pretend to knight you if you want, if you win. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what more we could say. Um, I like that Twitch chat is being quite divided as well and that we've got people yeah. equally hyping up both teams as well. Uh, actually, that's an interesting question. Do you guys pick the team that you want to win or the team you think is going to win? Because I know I mix it up sometimes because, you know, usually when I'm told here by production I have to pick, I usually go for the team I think is going to win because I like looking right. But also, <laughs> sometimes if I really like one of their teams, I don't care how bad their stats are, that, that team's going to win. I'm cheering to them until the end. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, I think Twitch is, is usually just, you know, rooting for the favorite or rooting who they think the favorite is. Twitch uh, is always right. But yeah, we yeah. doesn't matter what I we mean, say. Twitch honestly, is always right. 
there's definitely been a couple of occasions already here within the season where Twitch was on the other fence in comparison to, you know, the to talent. Us, yeah. and, and then <laughs> they end up, ended up being right. So who knows? It very well could be the case. There's only one way to find out, and that is within that server. And we're going to be kicking things off right here on Ancient. What an exciting start. A map that I feel like we've seen a lot over the season. Josephine running with that nade. A little bit of a marathon there to finally get it thrown. But look at them. They are storming towards this A site. And there's not really anybody home. Reinforcements already on their way. But Nia marathon there. Locked out of sight. But look at the minimap. That bomb is not on the A site at no, all. This is a complete fake. They have a, an amazing execute upon that A site. They managed to take a couple kills home and I mean, yes, there's a player advantage for Guild, but now a lot of time and space to work with for Astralis. Bamboozled again. We've seen it so much, but Anya with that angle, absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, not able to confirm the kill. Kit Kat, a player that you specifically highlighted, doing so much in Aurora, very far removed from the situation. A Molotov to try delay, that is all. We'll have to do the rest from afar. Oh, has a second Molotov, actually. Just going to try to burn down that timer. Is it going to work, though? They're just sticking it. Did it land? I mean, the, the Molotovs did land, but yeah, exactly. CTs were prepared. They had the smoke in their own hands. Could extinguish that fire. And yeah, on the back of that, even, even with it being a longer defuse, there was uh, just the numbers really into Guild's favor here, especially mm -hmm. after Anya falling. Uh, a very um, tough scenario, but it would have to commend Astralis. Like, this was a very calculated setup. They came into that round with a plan. Unfortunately, the numbers, not quite favoring them, but the idea was solid. That was a really, really unique pistol round. And I like it when teams come in with something really solid like that. But unfortunately, it's a sort of a, a one, one and done trick, isn't it? Once you do that once, it's not really going to work a second time. But it has yielded them a nice little buy, even without the round win. That bomb plant does so much for the economy, and Aurora going to be the first one to make contact. I say that, not able to get a point of damage off, but they do spot each other. You'll throw in a very deep smoke here towards that big bomb site, so meaning you'll lock out Astralis for the time being, slow things down within the round. And maybe if I want to go for a, a cheeky push. Oh, Astralis is really, well, not giving them much at all. Just now flushing into middle. Slowly trying to take map control, but at the same time, Guild very aggressive here. Taking down one player. And they have to sort of regroup now. Even need to be careful. Because they're on the hunt. Ismo does manage to escape. Aurora at the same time finds a response. I feel like they may have made a mistake by going so aggressive because look at how split up they are as well. They've drawn them so far away from these bomb sites, at least the B bomb site, and they've just been allowed to take full mid control Astralis. But plenty of time to regroup as they head towards A. And Anna, so much to do here. Spots the utility, going to hold down the trigger for the first. Taken down, however, good for only one. Near on that boosted up position, just going to peek the head around the corner. Cheeky little pick, goes for a second, a lot of damage. Not able to confirm the kill, but D7. And there's only four seconds left. And that bomb will not go down. D7, not letting it get planted. Going to get the kill as well. Time not on their side. And of course, guns and bullets, neither as well. Guild was just so aggressive within that round, continuously trying to take map control away of Astralis. And here and there, there were a couple of answers, but it definitely, um, in that round, felt like Guild had the upper hand throughout. So with that, back-to-back -back rounds. Money is still not the greatest. There was a good chunk of damage dealt. So with that, SMGs for the majority. But on the flip side, it's just Astralis with pistols. Is indeed, of course, when you force into that second round, if you do lose, regardless of the side you're on, it is a little bit miserable for the money. But looks, oh, spotted, not quite killed, is dinked, however. And Nia spots them as they're entering mid, only good for one. D7 gonna have to pick up the pieces here as they come flooding towards them, but look at that, the teamwork between D7 and Pollux, they're just gonna eliminate Astralis from this round. Running out of bullets, no problem whatsoever. And Guild make it a third. So now confidence certainly is uh, starting to get going here for Guild. 
And Astral is now with a very important round for them. It is four AKs in their hands. So firepower definitely in Astralis' favor. Especially when you're up against the FAMAS, the Galil, SMGs. The way they've been playing though, those SMGs getting up close and personal, it has made it quite difficult. These AKs may not even help. Yeah, kept away from uh, the angle that would have been so perfect for that weapon. Forced back. Look at oh, this that aggression. Flash. That flash was very good on Josephine. Josephine has to fall back and not quite ready in position in time. Pollock's able to get two for one there. So, massive opening once again for Guilt. Now, it forces Astralis to group up here. I know it's early the days. Time. I know it's early days, but can I change my prediction? <laughs> Guild do look insanely strong here. It is only fourth round, it'll fed us, but... Uh, they clear... Ooh! Does not to get the headshot. The double take actually coming on through. And Anna once again left to do so much, but taken down immediately as fire rains down and Pollock's locked out of sight. And the CTs are closed. Looks heavily tagged. She's the one with the kid as well. And Astrali very well positioned. Two towards Donut, one tucked into the site. And they're playing off of one another. Only problem being they wanted to grab information and that costs two lives. Anya does a great nade upon D7, but still no kill taken. That's the first, but they're sticking it, and that's the defuse. That's round number four, stolen away from Astralis. You hate to see it. This look to be going their way. The post plant looks solid, but Guild, a judge just ramping right up. I thought it was over because there was no utility to clear out Donut or lock them out from stopping that defuse. And then just the kills coming through. Maybe a little bit of a misplay from Astralis allowing them to get those kills. Uh, of course, they had no idea necessarily how much utility was left. But if they had, you know, might have been a little different. But yeah, snatched away, as you said. Look at that, the aggression from KitKat. Good for only one, an eye for an eye there. And on the CT side, that's not always favorable. But Nia, getting the pick onto Anya. It's going to swing it in their favor very early on. We've been seeing a lot of aggression in the first 50 and 20 seconds of the round, and it's usually been a guild's favor here. Guild just does a really good job of denying any space for Astralis Anything. to take and, and, like, breathing room. So Astralis constantly feel like, you know, they're forced to maybe go out and, and execute their plan faster because guild is just very proactive in these rounds that Astralis has no choice but to, you know, at least create some sort of response. I don't know what to suggest it, just suggest it, because we've seen them play very passively, and Guild just goes even more aggressive, and it's been working for them. But I don't know if they've necessarily got the firepower to meet it head on, because we'd have to see them go even more aggressive to sort of loop back around, but... I don't know. Maybe, maybe they know something that we don't. I like this little A rush. Ooh, one's already slipped through the net. Just trying to go for a bomb plant here. Looks to be denied. Close, but not quite. A lot of damage dealt, but Guild make it clean. All five of them remain alive. So this is very nice. You know, not only do they have back-to-back -back rounds to make sure this is clean, and their economy is uh, in a pretty nifty spot. They don't have to worry at all. And now on the flip side, yeah, Strahler's calling a tactical timeout. There's a lot of pressure riding on this round because Guild's already secured six. That's pretty much, you know, your ideal minimum halftime scoreline. And it's looking to maybe even get an even or become an even bigger gap. The orbs are out for both sides now, and I really need to see this orb having impact for Astralis because they've not really had a chance to use it. Of course, their economy, even with the max loss bonus, has been not amazing, and they've not. A couple of the rounds have been close in their defense, but it. I really need to see this AWP doing something magical, I think, because Anna's had the AWP and is looking really good with it. Hasn't even necessarily been called upon to do much 
Plus the team and the rifles just picking everything up. D7 on 10 and 2 already. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is a big round. They need this for the momentum switch. They need this to stop the snowball getting any further. Because as you said, already even at the half, at a very worst case scenario. Yeah, look at this. The Alp is being used just to hold off A. They're just expecting pushes at this point. Um, this time around, it's coming here for uh, Richita. So, well, opening secured once again. And immediately, you're not going to continue to go aggressive, but just prevent space from being taken. Slow things down again. It's an interesting one. Guild, they're playing a lot more passively. I say that as KitKat <laughs> is uh, there in space. They were playing more passively. And now look at I this. Love they put all of their chips into mid here. And unfortunately, good for one Kit Kat. Not going to find any more. But they know that there's two there now. So much information. Good hold, Bania. Makes the numbers even more dire here for Astralis. Have no choice but to just go out. But oh, that's just very awkward. I think Aurora flushed herself there just in panic. And yeah, mm -hmm. that just leaves Marie. Now the smoke at least has faded, but it's a one versus four, 30 seconds. This is maybe just hoping to die, so at least got some loss bonus in your bank, but hope to at least just take a player down in the process. Trying to draw them into her. And unfortunately, there is a lot of utility for them to clear this out and try take this round cleanly as well. Actually, going to be good for one. Top fragger for Astralis right now. Smoke coming out. You said to die before time. Don't know whether she will. And now if she dies after time. Oh, was that? That was a I think that very was after. cheeky. Yeah, um, no, but it was it was the good play that died. Marie survived. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was a bit a bit of a cheeky run around the the smoke there. But at least that she does manage bad. to stay alive. That's that's at least one AK in the pocket. But this is yeah, that was a bit awkward. And, yeah, in these late stages in the round, there's just panic on the side of Astralis. So eager to try and still make something out of it. But in that at, moment, uh, it's just Astralis not playing the cleanest. Look at the economy as well, because even if Astralis do manage to secure a round, they're not going to be handed an eco anytime soon. They have the money to go for a couple. So they really need to piece together two or three before they're just gifted around. And this gets worse and worse with every round that Guild secure. Of course, some rounds being a little bit messier than others, but the way they're playing right now, Guild storming this first map. And it's Astralis' map pick. So far, so good. I was a bit worried with Red Room being left open. Now that is a moment for Marie to find perhaps a bit of a gap in timing. But... Anna's doing a really good job, and D7 continues to put pressure from that B side as well. So, looks like Astralis is about to walk right into another trap. It's Anya that falls. The numbers, big or largely favoring here on the side of Guild. And they know exactly where Ismo is. So, she's kind of stuck. She just has to get a kill in order for her to continue on freely and to help out the rest of the team. So, you can see how... The other two players on the Stralis have just retreated. They have D7. That was absolutely clinical kill there. Pushing over towards this A site again. They've not had much luck. They've had a couple of bomb plants. And actually, looks like Guild have rotated somebody back away from this A site. They don't have much information on what these last players are. I say that just as they pounce, but unfortunately, not able to find anything. Nia and Anna kill a piece there and secures them an eighth. Now, even if Astralis get the last four rounds in a row, which I'll be honest with you, Vilas, I'm a little bit doubtful of. This is not a good half. Even for even for a CT side agent, this is looking good. Yeah, and I was really thinking like, okay, maybe Marie can find a gap in timing, punish them by leaving for, for leaving Red Room open, but it was very well calculated. Gil do that with purpose. So they continue to put pressure upon the side from else and worked that perfectly. And Astralis was just not expecting players to be doing that at all. So leave them here with very much lesser weaponry. Only a scout for Marie this time. And already fallen. 
Kit Kat. Ooh, getting a little bit bold. We've talked about their aggression. They've already got the opening pick. They don't want to feed anything away to Estrada, especially now that they know that they're just on this little bit of an eco buy here. Kit Kat desperately peeking this angle time and time again with the flash. It's just not able to find anything. Eventually, somebody's going to get a kill here. Aurora's just taken toying. a lot of space here, though. Oh. Ooh, D7 has just been so clean. Dust ball, but there is Kit Kat. Mows them all down. Three kills for her. And sure, it's some ego frags, but we, we, we love to see it that eventually, you know, all the baiting, <laughs> it's paying off. It's, it's one of those that everyone's like, oh, just, just eco frags. But ecos can be really dangerous in CS2 with just how, you know, Tech 9s, for instance, are unhinged. And it's all about making sure that it's inexpensive. Because, of course, you're expected to win the Ecos. But also, if you lose anything more than two players, it's... I don't want to call it cringe, but... This is so new with that aggression. Look at that. Pushing it to mid for information. And even with the pressure being up on the site, first kill does go the way of guild once more. They have to be a bit careful. There's a lot of smokes up, sort of dividing all of that defense. Oh, but G7 is still here. Can find a way around that smoke. Finds two, but now two back. And a bomb being planted, but it's only Marie that is standing. Kits available on all of these players. They know where she must be now. They're just slowly squeezing the life out of her. Spots one, gets the first, tries to get more, but... Unable to do so, the double peak just a little bit too much to handle, and then the defuse coming in. Oh, came off the defuse a little, a little early there, but plenty of time to fix that. That could have been a little scary though if that had been uh, any closer. Now maybe That's looking 10. for the orb, but uh, didn't quite manage to find it. I think it was in Twitch Temple, maybe they forgot, but this it's fine. There is so much money on the side of Guild. This was a good sign of life round, however, from Astralis. I, we talked about whether they either have to play even more passive or they need to raise the aggression. They yeah. stormed that site. They got the bomb down. Unfortunately, D7 disrespecting the smoke and they weren't checking it. They weren't having eyes on that angle either. Just walked through, got two kills, and then suddenly the tides entirely changed there. Yeah. It felt like by the time that D7 was sort of creeping through those smokes that it was still super hyper fixated upon Temple that mm. no one was busy if there was even a player tucked into the site at all. Um, so yeah, just very awkward. Of course, D7 also lucky that the spray D7. connects through the smoke, but you know, the kills are not lying. She's 15 in 5. She's doing it's an amazing job at such ADR. a good read. I know, she's just popping on big time. We talked about it last week, D7 being one of these plays to definitely keep an eye on it as well. And how finally in a team and in a role that she can flourish. And it's super exciting to see because she's stepping up in a big way. A little bit quiet to last series that we watched. But look at that. Her and Kit Kat keeping it on lockdown. But looks unfortunately going to fall. Kit Kat ready for some more. Ooh. 3v3. It's not often that we've seen the numbers be even here. And I say that, Nia hears us talking and says, not for long. Burning alive, however. Anya with the equalizing kill. D7 gonna fall. We were just praising her. But now 2v1. Anna on the AWP to try keep this flawless run alive. This round says a lot of how Guild have been, you know, so free through the entire map thus far. That they, you know, get super greedy. They, they go for these pushes mm. consistently. You don't have to. You have a player advantage, but they continue to be super exposed over towards Speedway. Of course she is. There's so much, There's money. So much money. They yeah. definitely can. And, you know, even if you're not winning the round, you can still do so much economic damage to the side of Astralis, making that last round of the half incredibly tough. Preemptive reload there. One watching each angle, managing to find so much space without being spotted, however. Gonna see the gun barrel, gets the kill through the wall, turns around, eyes on, and gets the second as well! Plenty of time for the defuse, we said about economic damage, but emotional damage as well as they take that round. Not quite able to re-pick up that orb, but... What on earth? 1v2 done so effortlessly.
absolutely insane. Astralis, of course, lucky to have that loss streak behind them. So money is not the biggest issue as before. But this is so rough. Like, I really thought Astralis could finally punish that hyper-aggression we saw out of guilt. But then we have the individuals continuing to step up. And even with finally securing that player advantage, Astralis still can't get it over the line. Oh, this one's rough. This one's rough. And look, they walk into Pollux as the opening kill as well. And look, Nia gonna be helped out by Kit Kat here. The HE grenade is gonna be really good, but all it's gonna do is force them off the angle. No kills off the back of it. Builders just toying with their food. They continue to pull off these pushes into middle. Now they smote it off. So immediately, you know, it calms things down. But it's conditioning Astralis big time. Like, where will the next push be? When will it happen? How much space do we dare to take across the map? And before they maybe even set foot into middle, for example, it's going to be quite a while. There's a lot of time already passing by. It is. They look at that. Guild are like, oh, you want the space? Take it. I dare you. See what happens. Beautiful Molotov bullets are going to be forced off the angle. They're forced into a fight. Unfortunately, not winning that one out. That is the equalizing kill. They close in around them. Nia, so much to do here. Keeps it calm. Gets the first. Has to be careful. Dancing around the pillar for the second. Gonna go for the third. Taken down, however. But suddenly it's just Aurora left alone. Teammates falling around them. Gets the first in mid. But having to look left, right, back, forward. 2v1. 15 seconds, though. And that's really going to be putting this situation into favor of Guild. They make it a clean hop, 12 to 0, as Guild prevails.
What a half we have just witnessed. As you can see, 12-0. A single pistol round stands between Guild and taking their opponent's map pick flawlessly. Astralis, one hell of a comeback, gonna have to come out here. But if it was to happen, this is where it starts. Woo, let's get this underway. This is a must here for Astralis. The only glimmer of hope. This is their map here. Keep that in mind. Guild has just decided to run away with it. Setting up here for what seems to be a B execute. Immediately, smoke start to drop. Looking for a response here, perhaps, but not quite. So with that, rest of the utility now deployed. Boost comes up here. Astralis tries to be one step ahead. But Nia continues to take a couple of heads with her. Making this even. And now bomb planted guild. Slight advantage with the smoke still being up. But now they will fade. They will try to ramp into CT as a lovely flashbang. But how much more can they get? They just continue to pull up the fire. Marie just standing with 2 HP in a dream. One versus one right now. Anna dancing right behind the pillar. But a position not yet revealed. Marie so much for her to still check. And there we have it. Guild make it clean. 13-0 on Astralis map pick. Whoa, what a crazy end. We talked about maybe this being a little bit of a quicker half and of course a pistol round standing them between them and the 13-0. I'm not sure if that's the first we've seen from this region. I know it's not the first we've seen this ESL Impact Season 13 -0. But from EU, I'm pretty sure it is. What a way to make your mark in this series and this season already. I don't name. have words. <laughs> this was just an ancient masterclass. The way that Guild was able to switch gears constantly, um, often condition Astralis you know, thinking into how they are playing so aggressive and therefore Astralis becoming very passive on the on the other so side of things. Oh, and it just makes it rough that whenever, you know, then there's a roundup where Guild slows it down, Astralis is not expecting it and there's a lot of time wasted and yeah, it's just, it went from bad to worse. So now it's the task for Astralis to really rethink of what went wrong and how can we make sure this is not going to happen on map two? It's definitely a scary one. And the only thing they've really got going into this is that they get to start on their preferred side, which really yeah. isn't saying much. But they've got a couple of minutes to reset, to settle down, calm down, reevaluate what they're going to do. Now, we do get to see some of our match statistics here. Absolutely crazy numbers coming out here from of course guild i don't think a single one of these players went negative no by quite yeah. a margin as well very large margin i mean you know there was a, a Look one at the entry point kills. where we it, i know it's pretty insane everyone doing their bit as well uh, anna especially here and considering that uh anna picks up the old boys of the times as well it's it's pretty impressive i that's crazy. And look, Anna on the uh, five openings and then no openings at all for the entire side of Astralis. I think that says a lot, quite frankly. Uh, we need to see that change up. The early aggression from Guild, they need to find a way to shut this down. For sure, for sure. And there was one player in particular which made it extremely difficult here for yes. the Astralis players. And that is none other than D7. We highlighted her already in week number one, but she continues to deliver. She is a star player and what a pickup this is for Guild. 130 ADR, 92% cast. I don't know if we're keeping track of like who has the highest cast score. Maybe our, <laughs> our wonderful stats guy Newt has as a list of the highest cast, but that's got to be up there. That's crazy numbers. Uh, 16 and 8, perfect 2 KD there as well. Stunning stuff, as you said, an amazing pickup for Guild. And as we said, only the start of the season, and it only seems to be getting more and more amped up as we go along. Yeah, and yeah, I was really thinking that back in Guild's their matchup against Ends, there was so much room for them to potentially take that best of three, but there was a lot of potential. But now, this is really the guild where I see things click together. Um, and sure, D7 popped up big time, but it wasn't just her. There were entries across the table. The orb had impact. 
and it just looks solid. Now it is time for Astralis to respond though, and that will have to be on Anubis. What do you reckon? Do you think Astralis can still do this? Production, I'd like to change my pick from earlier. Um, I would like, let's just strike that from the record. Uh, Cause we were very confident going into this about Astralis. And now I feel the complete opposite. We talked maybe about reverse sweep. I don't think we are going to see Nuke if Anubis is anything like what we saw over on Ancient. And of course, this yeah. is the map pick of Guild. They've played it a bunch. They've had incredible results on it as well. I think they've only lost it once in recent sort of memory. They lost it, uh, I believe it was versus Bigger Keeper uh, during mm. the Trader FE Masters. I think that's yeah. the only time that they have lost this map over the past couple of months in at least officials. I don't know about uh, outside of some of the stuff we've been tracking, but at least in all of the women's tournaments that we've been looking at, that is the only time they've dropped this map. Uh, crazy results as well. They beat uh, Astralis FE in open qualifier number one, 39, as the decider to eliminate them from open qualifier number one this season as well. So the stars really really aligning here as well 13 one against fours are ladies so there's nothing but good things to say about guild on this map and that scares me it definitely scares me as well i mean you just mentioned the 39 so i know that in the past this map has been somewhat close so i hope at a minimum we get to see sort of mm. that score line because if astralis just fumbled a ball here their confidence is just going to tank from here on out because if this is going to be a walkover, it's going to be a very tough pill to swallow. It is. And as you said, we're, we're still quite early days in the season as well. This is not the note that you want to be starting off of because then you've got to do an underdog run and go. You've got to try flawless the rest of this season if you want to try take one of those elusive, amazing spots going into, of course, the land finals. So it puts it in a difficult position guild of course wanting to go one and one here as well um again middle of the pack not a bad place to be as well it's also a nice place to be because you're not the one that the demos are being watched for but i believe we are ready to go into map number two and see if this is going to be just as one-sided of an affair or maybe we see astralis you know maybe we see some magic maybe we see that but before we jump into map number two we will go to a short break so we hope you stick around
Welcome back, everybody. It's time for map number two here in this matchup between Guild and Astralis. And thus far, Guild has proven that they pretend, well, not, well, they just look like the better team right now. They have slain the competition on the Ancient, and now it's time for Anubis, which is their map pick. Now, only maybe silver lining on the horizon is that Astralis gets to pick whatever side they want to start on. But uh, something just needs to, to change, like everyone going negative, and it is once again Marie and Ismo doing sort of the heavy lifting, but it's not super heavy, it's more like just, you know, one jerry can. Light that's, lifting. That's about it, yeah. Yeah, if, if we're talking about lifting there, it would appear that Guild came with a whole entire forklift to lift themselves up out of that 0-1, put themselves 1-1 in the overall scoreboard as well, but Anubis lies ahead of us, as you said, the map pick here of Guilds, and that should scare Astralis. It should scare you guys at home as well, because we want to watch more Counter-Strike. And if last map is anything to go by, if you missed it, it was 13-0 to Guild. I'm hoping we get to see a little bit more here. Ismo going aggressive, using Guild's own tactics to get them. Is going to get the opening kill, but Kit Kat not cleared. Good for one, however, that is all but equalizing kill coming through from Anna. D7 trying to keep them at bay there. Fights them off, stood in the open, takes bullets from all directions, and now it's just Pullock's left. I wonder if that was a bit of a reach from Guild, so them being very passive in trying to take A, almost expecting that push to come out for Astralis. Only this time around, Astralis, a bit better in the aim department. And then the number is definitely not lying, a three against one. But well, we have seen clutches coming out from Guild today, so I'm not going to put it past them. But that bomb in a very difficult position to retrieve. I might just use your time. Maybe Astralis get impatient, want to push something, but looks like they're sitting tight. Lovely crossfire here. I don't see any way to chip away at this. Get one, but that is a round on the board for Astralis. The first round of the series for them as well. And it's good to see them starting out strong, especially on this CT side. What are your thoughts about them starting on the CT side? I mean, I've definitely seen a big bunch of teams do this. Uh, it depends on your play style and... Yeah, I feel Astralis maybe feel a bit more confident, <laughs> especially considering how Guild was able to, you know, just be so aggressive. I think they were kind of done with being on T-side and it not working out. And maybe now being on CT is just a bit of a, you know, clean slate. Just going to be trying and come in with a, a different playstyle in comparison to the last map. Indeed. And CT Pistol is a big one to win as well. You lose that, it is a devastating blow to, I'd say, the entire first quarter of the map at times. Guild, no bomb plants, so no weapons for them, so they are going to have to do this. Ooh. Right, I say that. Fumble nade, however. The second one is going to be good, but Anya, such a perfect weapon for this angle. But I'm just going to go for the bomb plant. And it's not being denied, so that is money in the pocket at least here for Guild, and probably... You know, the job secure. This is what you want to get out of the round. Maybe make it a bit more costly. And on over that, grabs a rifle. Uh, not quite any more that she is able to do, but two kills. Bomb plant. Not bad. Indeed, indeed. Josephine going to recover that rifle as well. So, in all fairness, a little bit more of an expensive round than I think Astralis was hoping for. But they keep it on lockdown. And that is good to see. This is already looking more promising. But... Now it's where it gets worrying because Guild have the weapons to buy and we saw what they were capable of with these weapons and on arguably the more favoured side to start on Anubis. Astralis, I think this is going to be the real test of metal even though it's a bit of a bonus for them. This is going to be a round where we get to see whether they're going to sink or swim for the rest of this map. All the flashes and they're pretty good. Ana's still alive though, but eventually caught in between a sandwich with the push from A as war as water. The so flash that so good. Exactly. Just completely blind panic mode activated and with that guild lose their opening player. Um, and the orb. Yeah, that's a 
That's maybe not quite what Guild was expecting. Aurora takes that one away. And gets back to safety as well. So Astralish with that information. They know that Guild is not super proactive. They're taking the sweet time. Now slowly starting to creep out again. Lovely flashbang. The flashes here into Canal have been ruining everybody's days. They've managed to whittle down the time a lot, and they've managed to whittle down the players even more. And yeah, that Molotov going to hold them at bay. I don't think they're going to want to disrespect for that. And they are going to hop up behind this pillar. Just wait down this time. It has to be an A hit now, realistically speaking. Will they be able to keep hold of it? Perfect angle for it, though. Oh, smoke. But Anya holds it. Needs to be a bit careful and switches to the USP instead. But the numbers not lying. Astral is heavily favored in here in this situation. And killed hope to go for a bomb plant because there's so little time left. But everything once again denied. Astral is, is off to a great start. Indeed. Aurora, that nade would have been the finishing blow even if they hadn't had that uh, kill stolen. And we talked about that being a big one for the confidence, not only in our faith of Astralis in the series, but for Astralis themselves. And it's looking a lot better already. We're seeing Guild maybe a little bit more passive than we did on Ancient here. Back on Tech Nines, I like this, however. This works really well with their style of play, at least from map number one. Curious to see how they put it to use here. And Josephine in for a bad time here. Oh, Another fumbled nade. The yeah, the, the flashes are just uh, not always connecting. And the aggro plan of Guild out of the window, at least for the time being. Looking to flash Josephine in here. And definitely spots one player. That's one kill going their way. And Kit Quiet Cat falls as well here. The rest retreated back in towards the middle. Hoping that maybe across the map that they can still get something going. But the setups so far look really solid here for Astralis. Is indeed that HE grenade going to do a lot of damage there. And Pollock's going to walk directly into the AK. The double swing, however, absolutely perfect. The headshot's coming on through. And Anya now has to pick up the pieces. Gets the first. Here's the footsteps. Getting sprayed from all directions, taken down, but it's a 2v3. They have this sight. They've picked up a rifle as well, but that AWP going to be peaking the angle. Missed shot will allow for the bomb plant uncontested. This one might have the perfect angle and the perfect timing here as well. Good for one, near good for a second. Now it's a 1v1. That AWP last in play. Running out of bullets as well. Switch to the sidearm and Nia cleans up. First round for Guild. They stop Astralis' momentum before it can get too crazy. And that is a round on the board for Guild first this map. And the economy of Astralis going to suffer because of it. I love that post plan, by the way. Like, D7 was in a bit of a tricky and very much exposed position over towards long, but... Very aware that a rotation was coming into full effect, so they played that situation together. She moved into heaven, got a kill. Yes, she got traded, but Nia with that already so close up and personal and able to win out that duel. And immediately off to a strong start here as well. Anna on the AWP has doing fantastic over on Ancient as well. Now once again, full kills already in the bank. Hoping for even more, but Ismo going to make it a bit tricky here. Goes for a very aggressive push, but look at that. Trade is ready. Lovely swing yet yeah, from Anya. And going to fall back as well. That's the 3v3 initiated. Aurora, the scout, actually winning that one out there. Sometimes the budget option is the best. 2v3 now. And they have this A bomb site, but they need to get the bomb and get it there safely. And yeah, very ratty angle here. Going to be very difficult to clear out. Maybe they won't even bother looking. I say that. Going to walk into Pollocks. And that'll be the bomb. Hopefully retrieved here. I mean, it is right around the corner and the spam. Oh, could come on through, and especially with this push. Oh, but that's so rough. Josephine falls 
and oh, you would hope that they could have each other's back but with a scout and an smg it's very tough to have that long range battle and now aurora is, is uh, doubting of where to go oh and molly doubt as well got a little worrying there because they body blocked each other in canals and it could have led to aurora getting another kill that could have made this a little bit more difficult for guild but 2v1 the molotov to try force the fight forces it but unfortunately it backfires and that is a second round to guild closing that initial gap already yeah, this push was very nice coming out of ismo and i really thought that maybe they could set the pace but there continue to be so many back and forth fights and that moment there towards water was a very tough one. So now back to back rounds. Eco coming out here for Astralis. Looks like a B stack with the exception of Anya. And she already has eaten a nade down to half HP. Oh, and look at that. Oh, no. Can we Astralis have a nade just to play the game? <laughs> Astralis decided to push. And with that, they just straight up walked into another HG melted like butter on a hot day hot damn what an age that you know i'm i'm voting that as my play of the game i don't think we're allowed to do that there were no kills but oh my gosh what a juicy nade <laughs> red and look at this they're gonna sweep up the smg's farming off the back of that as we said nade softening them up nicely and now just josephine who in all fairness one of the best coming off of the back of it but 50 HP, not much to do it with. No kit, a single smoke, and nothing but a MAC-10 as everyone encloses in around her. Hopefully she's not claustrophobic. Peeks out the angle. D7, gonna sweep that one under the rug. And 3-3 three, three on the scoreboard. All equal. Astralis win three in a row. Guild win three in a row. But Are they gonna go back now, and forth uh... now? Very well, could be. This is quite important, though, because Astralis, as we mentioned already before, their economy looking quite dire. No head armor, for example, here, and only one kit. So, utility has the priority here. And understandably so, especially up on the CT side. I like that Astralis is playing this rather far back, I think. Guild also... We're not seeing quite the same level of aggression that we did map number one. It's been working for them the past couple of rounds, and so maybe a little bit of a switch up a pace here. Making Astralis make the first move. Trying to force a mistake out. You played really slow. Just waiting for smokes to fade. Slowly take control a step at a time. They've drawn up so much utility from Guild here, Astralis. Not much left. Ooh, Marie spots one. Gonna throw out that flash, fall back. On how that mid pressure came about. Now the call has been made. They know exactly what Guild has been pulling up and has been cooking for this round. But it's falling apart. Aurora even lands a kill with a pistol. Running out of bullets, but no issue for her. And now Anna, what can you do with an orb stuck behind a pillar? Absolutely nothing. And this is exactly the bounce back that Astralis needs. They pick up an orb in the process. So economy-wise, um, th this is going to be helping them out big time massively massively the orc we really didn't get to see much of on map number one due to just the economy and the fact that they weren't winning rounds they weren't having the opportunity to save you know or picked up orc either and aurora looking a little more confident already on this map we can see six and three pretty nice going here tactical timeout being called from guild here um i'm hoping that we don't see the whole map go three rounds and three rounds and three rounds and three rounds but knowing our luck May well be the case. It very well could be. But yeah, they're not going to be awarded even off the back of a victory. Any free rounds here. They are not going to be allowed to take their foot off the pedal here. 
Hunter's Guild immediately going to buy back. Maybe going to be a little bit worse for wear if they can win another round. But, got to get that far. You're just spreading across the map. So, whereas we saw a lot of aggression out of uh, Ancient, of course that was CT side, but this time just playing a bit slower. Take it step by step, see where you can maybe punish a mistake that you see happening. But Astralis do sort of pretty good job of keeping them at bay, at least in the early stages of the round. Deep Smokes into middle, for example. And it will cause uh, Guild to invest a big chunk of their own utility in order to take space across the map. Yeah, Guild just really haven't been touching mid this round. Just hands off fully. You said about the Deep Smokes just forcing them off. Deciding not to even mess with that one, not to entertain it. Now that their little push over towards B didn't work, it's now an option. It's on the table for them. Aurora trained up with this AWP. However, the backup of Marie has been the sole defender of mid for most of these rounds. But again, no, no kills to be found here. Guild with that opening pick early on, but... Nothing since. Time will start to tick though, almost the 30 second mark, which is usually when teams love to push upon a site. So I love that immediately Josephine here, very much ready for a push, grabs one kill, but is immediately to in return. But a lot of time wasted, and Aurora, look how close she already is. There's a gap in the smoke. So if someone decides to cross, oh no, that should have been a hit. If that connected, Astralis had very much a shot here in this round, but now it's all falling apart. Guild strike right back, making it a 4 to 4. Whatever they were talking about in that timeout, clearly paying off in spades there. And it has thrown Astralis into a little bit of turmoil here. They're not really going to be able to buy much. A couple of deagles, as you can see. And a little bit of armor here for Ismo as well. Maybe going to be sending them in first, tank some of that damage. But Guild, this will all just be about damage control, minimizing casualties, and trying to secure that lead for the first time this map. Should be a relatively uh, easy pickup here with just upgraded pistols. Just going to be uh, executing upon the side. Deep Molly's into the side. Well, it's for at least stands her ground for the time being. Well, only a very short duration. Kit Kat comes in through water and they completely sandwich that site. Still a bit uh, hesitant. They know there's a couple lurking around the smokes. So you got to take it a step at a time before uh, committing to that bomb plan. Desperate attempts to find a headshot or some damage, not paying off. Aurora, that body shot gonna be the killing blow, but 1v3. Gonna try push up, trying to go for it. Oh. That nade, so good though. What is uh. it with the guild players and the nades this map? They've fumbled a lot of flashes, but the HEs have been mwah, impeccable. Lovely stuff to be seeing. Also, uh... Update on uh, the other game we got going on, Fearless Ooh. Cheaters against uh, Gamer Legion Prism. Uh, Gamer Legion actually won that first oh. map, well, 1 to uh, 0. That was 13-7 uh, on Mirage. Um, pleasantly surprised, we'll have to say. Fearless Cheaters, of course, a very solid team. And Gamer Legion, uh, not missing around. Yeah, uh, dare I say a little bit of an upset on that one. Albeit only map one. We don't know the situation. Maybe that was, you know... Maybe that was the map pick of Gamer Legion Prism. Maybe it's a map that, you know, it was a surprise that it got let through in the veto. We don't know, but that's still impressive. I think it's just been a day of impressive ESL impact so far. It does look like it's only about to get better. Ash is raining. Put on your that spot. Oh, I, I thought she was going to be ready, but no, the swing is absolutely perfect look at this guild has absolutely no chill just barging right upon the site and i feel like that this is sort of a bit of a deja vu upon ancient where i feel guild has the upper hand when it comes to a lot of these aim duels indeed the mechanical skill of guild today has been through the roof you talked about them not being ready not being prepared fought with their pants down a little bit on a couple of these but 
sometimes just one of those small little mistakes that unfortunately your opponent spots at the right time. You know, not being able to pull out the AWP to scope in in time, that was one that we saw. They are just going to vacate this bomb site, of course. The uh, Anubis bomb site, a little bit of a funky one at times. And Astralis, they're going to keep hold of two rifles, too far removed to really do anything here. I don't think, even if they ran full out here, that they could take these weapons away. So a little bit of a saving grace here for Astralis. They don't really have the money to buy around them. Maybe we see a couple of Deagles, a couple of Tech Nines, but uh, money has been something Astralis have struggled with. It's sort of looking at what you can afford. Actually, the rest will buy a round, so it will turn into a force instead of sort of a half buy. Mm. And I think they're just a bit panicking of how they just hope to be within close range of their opponents. And there's not that many rounds to work with anymore within the half. Mm. So feeling the pressure to deliver now. Oh, massively. Especially with Guild already secure in six at the half. We did say this is the more favored side. Uh, even though Astralis, their ability to pick, they did choose to start CT. Maybe wanting to close this map out with a bang on T side. So you said all about how they want to play. And actually being a lot better this map already. A lot more cohesive. Unfortunately, Guild sometimes just hitting those crazy shots. Hitting those crazy clutches as well. Ooh, near spotted. Managing to jump back to safety though. But... Not for long. Wants to peek this, wants to get a kill. You can see that they're hungry. On both occasions, actually, that we've seen Astralis play in the past couple months, the CT side usually was their stronger side. So it's starting to make me a bit worried. We need to see something shift right now. There's a good trade by Marie here. And now Aurora stuck behind the smoke, but hopes to maybe creep on through. Flash comes and that's a very good spot immediately a second foul by josephine keeps the numbers even but it's so tricky ismo finds the kill up on the seven with the nade and time is starting to run extremely low spray favors astralis as they march an inch closer once more looking really good there the he grenade usage impeccable once, I don't know what it is this map. Everyone's just stepped up on the utility front. I'm not sure if uh, there's any way we can find out how much HE damage has been done at the end of this map because I would be, I'd be very curious to see. Um, but yeah, the nade kill, absolutely beautiful. Swinging the tides back in their favor, making it a 1v1. Closing it out pretty nicely, 5-6. Definitely a very different team to what we saw over on Ancient. But uh, as we said, yeah, this was a map that these two teams have played on before. It was a decider map, ESL Impact Open Qualify number one for this season. And Guild Esports did take that. Um, I do believe they did win. Uh, tw no, they lost 19-22, actually. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was OT. No, it was, it was OT, yeah. All I know is that uh, I think Astralis won it in OT, but they did. They did make it pretty close. And in the meantime, whilst we've been yapping, two kills, three kills even, sorry, coming out here from Astralis. They're not done taking space to Jet, pushing into middle. Getting a lot of space. I love Ismo's position, but she's been sitting there a couple of rounds. No shoulder being spotted. And immediately, look at this. Astralis wrestling now, but no, they get caught off guard by these AKs and even a Tech 9, making this from a 5 against 2 to a 2 on 2. And very winnable. This all trained perfectly on the angle. Missed shot, however. That Tech 9 going to come out. Not quite able to do it. Not going to be able to plant that bomb just yet. Trying to bait it out. Isolating the 1v1s. Going for this fight here. Spots the first. Don't know if they spotted Mary there, but they're going to run on over to this A site and they just about have time to get this bomb down. We're going to come roasting around. Makes a lot of noise. Kit Kat certainly is aware. Just waiting for the timing. Oh, missed opportunity. Both of them 
Position revealed. And Maria is the one winning out of battle, meaning it's going to be a 6-6. Six to six, An absolute nil by to here in map number two. Find out how it closes out right after this. As we left it off, it was 6-6 on the scoreline. A very different affair to what we saw on map number one. But Astralis, they have got so much to do here. Now on the favoured side of their own uh, map pick. Sorry, not their map, map pick. Guild's map pick. But this is do or die, of course, map number two. Will they be able to take us to nuke? Will we see a third map? It all starts on this pistol round. Well, Ono kicks it off with the first kill, make it a double. But the flash is very, very solid. So immediately two right back. But it's still a super tricky situation. They go for a bomb plant, but the CTs are creeping in. There's no time to reposition. So immediately a trait once more. And D7 is just popping heads left and right, adding just more and more to the list. 13 and 8. Beautifully done. Throwing, was that a flashbang for good luck? A biggest, for good yeah, luck? Celebra celebra celebratory <laughs> flash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and as, as you should, as, as is your given a right to after a round like that, that is a confidence booster. That is the third of uh, four pistols that we have seen taken there by Guild, of course. Uh, Astralis did take pistol round number one on this map, but Guild every other so far. 
But Bombplant has awarded Astralis a pretty snazzy buy, if I do say so myself. They've got the Galils, they've got the Mag-10, and they've got another scout. They've been loving this scout, this time actually on Marie. And might get a little bit of a tag here. Not going to, unfortunately. Kit Kat, knowing to back off that angle, not show their cards. Soft flick. Not really any connection as of just yet. Oh, and this is a bit tricky. Anya right behind it. And Guild very much ready for players to be at close and personal. So them clearing it out with two players. Guild grabbed the advantage in this particular round as well. And it starts to be uh, an extremely tricky situation. Two players in water two over towards mid. Bit split up, trying to grab space across the map, and Isbo does so here in middle, keeping Anna busy. I'm just gonna slip it away and let them take that space, yeah. Kit Kat still holding on to connector here. Diligent, diligently, I may add. But they have just allowed a lot of space over towards A. They're very much stacked on this B site right now. But. That bomb heading A, they've got a very real chance here. Kit Kat gonna have so much to do to try defend this site. Actually, Ismo's got a nice little ability to cut off any of the rotates here. Six seconds. Astralis with so much space still. Ugh, really bring it down to the wire. Like, if, for example, D7 would have gone for that and maybe denied one plant, it could have gotten extremely tricky. Now, three on three, Josephine finds an additional one, make it a double on the Mech 10, farming some cash, and Kit Kat with that is the last woman standing. Dings a player, but not quite the kill coming on through. So, back and forth, we shall go. This is how we saw map one start, uh, map two start, sorry, and this is gonna see how map two finishes. But yes, very good there. Uh, Ismo, incredible at cutting off the rotates. And as you said, D7 usually would have gone for that. Unfortunately, not quite able to. And Josephine closing it out nicely there. A lot more of individuals stepping up this map as well, I have a feeling. Unfortunately, Guild forced back onto the pistols here. It is, I say, a force because they have forced all of their money into this round. There's not much to show for it, however. A lot of information here about where the players are not, and that will help the team narrow down where they might be. They can hear a lot of utility raining down up there in mid. Looks with no line of sight here, not gonna be able to see anything. But they've done a very good job at keeping back this offensive. Flash in the wall. It's, uh, it's at least a short hit here. Have to fall back into the side, but look at the user that's starting to rain. Making it a bit tricky, but Kit Kat's find one near as well. Oh no! And this is starting to go from bad to worse. The Deagles are prevailing, tagging up another. Well, not quite. But it's making things so hot right now for Astralis. A one versus two. 28 seconds and the CTs could be anywhere. They still have to get this bomb plot down. There's only 20 seconds left to do it. Pollux has got line of sight on where this last player is. The crossfire is impeccable. Gonna walk into one of them. The Deagle spam prevails. And that is an eighth round out of nowhere from Guild. You were already mentioning how there was a lot of early information within that round. So as soon as they knew that they were gonna swarm this, uh, this site, they had such a, a good approach, that crossfire setup, you know, one player tucked in. It just worked wonders. Plus, on top of that, their aim is just impeccable, you know, the, the way that they were able to hit shot after shot. Well done. Crazy scenes there. And now it's Astralis that are forced back onto the Deagles themselves. 
Don't want to count them out because after a round that we've just seen, we can see that they're pretty powerful. But poised and ready are guild. Caught with utility out. Does take Josephine a second to confirm the kill, but Kit Kat is going to fall. Very split up here, a guild. Two distinct camps. Camp A, Camp B. And neither of them going to have a particularly easy journey to reunite. But Isma might get caught out here in mid. T7 going to have to line them up here. Oh, poor oh, Chuck. Actually do a little quickly there. But... Not quite gonna work out. At least the bomb plant secured, so the money is not too dire. But Gil now finding conversions. This is uh, starting to look a bit scary. You know, they're marching upon nine now. Slowly but surely getting closer towards that finish line. Indeed, Pollux, albeit as we said, uh, eco frags, but just holding the trigger, not being overwhelmed there. Stellar stuff coming out. And yeah, marching closer to the finish line to map number two. The elusive 26 rounds they need to close this out nice and cleanly. Very much en route. And you can see how hyped up they are. There is fire behind their eyes. We talked about Guild coming into this. They looked uh, pretty happy. You know, Astralis. Um, they also, I would say, like, Guild looked a lot more locked in, wasn't it, that we said? Lovely setup here. So, Flash. Works perfectly, blinds D7 on the back of that. Opening kill secured. I'm going to continue to apply the pressure, but Gilda's not sitting still. Looking to grab information. Coming out a close corner, making sure that that at least is clear. And now maybe continue on the hunt for kills for a potential equalizer. They do take up Anya, but in return they back off. These aggressive early plays on the CT side, a staple of how Guild have been playing this season. Maybe not yielding as much results as we saw over on Ancient, but still a lot of information that they have. Josephine, oh, not even going to hold the trigger. Discipline, but the discipline on the kills is their clean headshot after clean headshot. And that is a three player advantage for them. But we've seen 2v5 swing very much in the favor of Guild already. Saw one earlier this season. But I think the call to save already been made here. Yeah, with how back and forth this map has been going, having two rifles saved over is kind of a must. Knowing that within a split second your economy could be shut down and potentially costing you the map, so... Ugh, saving a rifle or two would be nice. One already taken away now. Oh no, maybe needs to be a bit proactive as to where these T's are going to be coming from, Ismo. Which he could, but has to make noise in the process. So you immediately see Anna turn around. And, oh, life taken away. All weapons gone for guilt. Money, uh, very iffy. They could put together a buy here if they be... wanted to. They could, but then again, now you're still in the, technically in the lead. You might mm. want to give one up. In order to have a, a great buy, maybe invest into an orb again. Anna's been doing great on that. Yeah, if they the give this round up, yeah. Astralis can take the lead, as you said. I don't know. There's a little bit of utility available here. And look at this aggression. Unfortunately, going to backfire greatly. Fighting from their spawn, even. Look at this. <laughs> When Guild is pushing, <laughs> Astralis is a bit scared. We've seen that from the previous map. They know so it's Astralis, an eco now. Uh, exactly, yeah. So they have to be careful. You don't want to be losing that orb, for example, now that you've built up the bank. We all have that one friend that knows that there's an orb and they have a deagle and they're like, nah, I'm going to do it anyway. They're not <laughs> that guy. They They are not that guy. But yeah, Pollock's looking a little bit worse for wear, hobbling already. But a lot of that time whittled down. They've stacked over to, albeit the correct site. That bomb, however, very much uh, needs to be retrieved. Ooh, is most spotted ahead there.
And Ismo gonna take a head there as well. And another kill to the tally. Guild still clinging on to this bomb site, but as we can see, that bomb very much looking like it is going to head over towards A as they've got a little bit of a sneaky suspicion that this site is loaded with players. Aurora quick on the trigger. Needs to be a bit careful not to get overrun. Oh, scary. <laughs> we were talking about how that orb is a big investment, but... First kill coming into effect, still needs to switch to pistol, but not a problem at all. So, Australis tie things up 9 to 9. And now we're starting to get into the important rounds. A bit of bank now build up for Australis. Guild can invest into a buy again. They can. Ooh, time up being called here. This is a big one for Australis to secure. Because if they can secure this, they take the lead once again, and they get themselves double digits. They get themselves towards map point, which, of course, we direly need to see if we want to see Nuke. Now, Guild, I'm not sure what happened between the maps. Lost a little bit of the fire behind their eyes, mayhaps. But important one ahead of them. There's a nice little bit of utility. Maybe missing a little bit on a couple of these players, but... We, again, shall have to see... Time out is over. The round will be starting shortly. And still no orb for guild. Something that they've, again, struggled a little bit. We've seen it a couple of times, but not quite seen the same level of impact. Looks like Astral is heavily focusing this B-bomb site here, and we want to take up the pace, so immediately a flash coming through, and a bit of an awkward situation. Guilt has two players sort of stuck in the same position, but it does leave them with trade potential, but so is the case here for Astralis. But look at this, Kit Kat managed to find herself a double kill, swinging the numbers in favor now, back towards Guild. She adds a third, and with that, the round one for Guild. The numbers is... Kit Kat just matter. make sure that everything swings back in their way. Numbers do not matter to Guilds. They will win in even the most disadvantageous situations, it would seem. Absolutely incredible. And they picked up that AWP as well. We talked about them maybe not having had it as much as we would like to see. But it's back out. It's back on Anna, who is a lovely even 16 and 16, I may add. I like it when there's a little bit of symmetry here as well. Well, look. Dodging bullets in mid, maybe just a little bit here. Aurora taking the initiative, pushing up a little bit further. Tunnel vision on this one angle. And we might see a bit of a battle of the orbs here, a clash of the titans. Ooh, and Aurora winning that one out there, but burned as she retreats. But two opening kills as Josephine puts another mark next to her name. That bomb left behind. So there's a chance for Guild to exploit this weakness, especially. But... Isma trying to destroy any chance at guild, putting themselves closer, closing them out in two maps. It's a 5v2 here. There is a little utility and there is a little players left alive here for guild, just near left. They don't know where she is, but unfortunately that A bomb site gonna fall. There is naught that she can do. I would just be looking to save this weapon now. Yeah, money not looking great at all here for Gil. And now we're starting to get into a very dire situation where, you know, you win a round, but then immediately you lose, and the money is just back to square one. It's a nice additional kill here found, because the Stratus their economy is not the greatest either, but if they lose a single rifle, then, you know, so be it. You can afford another one, maybe not another two. And I don't think anyone is as close. So it looks like Nia should be able to hold on to this rifle. But uh, yeah, the, the money is, is in forced territory even here for Gil. Oh, 
I'm interested to see how this next round goes, because of course it's it's we talked about this being a game of cat and mouse very much so. And the force by coming out here from guild, because they're desperately trying to keep Astralis as far away from map point as possible. If they lose this, however, they will have nothing to defend round uh, the round after that with. Round number 22, I believe it will be. Which would put Astralis on map point. We would see Nuke potentially, but it is too close to tell right now. What a nail-biter this is. And Astralis here... Hanging on by a thread, they do manage to at least get back into things. But after the previous map, this uh, this map is very much a, a must-win. But how much can Guild do? That FAMAS M4 upgraded pistols, which we have seen do so well at Guild. They bring out the strat book for this one. What is happening? The confidence that KitKat has is absolutely insane. A couple rounds ago, she pulled out that amazing 3k and now she just goes straight into the fire. So, player advantage. No. Always when these Does deagles that, come uh, out. <laughs> I mean, if Ana here can maybe push... There are a couple of rifles outside, so maybe that makes them even more eager on top of already the information that could be retrieved. There we go, an extra rifle here being picked up. And D7, uh oh, shoulder spotted and it doesn't matter that she's the one on the pistol. She doesn't miss. Ismo not able to find any consolation kills and off the back of what was a very mishmash, miserable by... They get an 11th. We talked about them trying to keep this map point out of Astralis' grasp, and that is how they do it. It's always the deagles, I'm telling you. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's the... I mean, I don't officially know why she's called D7, but I believe that the D stands for deagle. Deagle. I wouldn't be surprised. I thought maybe, you know, D7, like dice, but you don't get a D7. There's no <laughs> seven-sided <laughs> dice in the world of... Anything really, and maybe there's an obscure D and D community out there that that has a D seven. But <laughs> maybe we maybe we should ask. Maybe we should ask. Or maybe it's common knowledge, and I'm just really oblivious. <laughs> well, one thing I know for certain is that Guild has stolen that away from Astralis. Only two rounds separate them from a victory. And, yeah, Astralis' bank is not the most ideal. Upgraded pistols, at least there is some left if Guild make it to 12. So, a full investment can come in the round after this. And who knows? Maybe it's just the game of the pistols? But Ismo does take a large hit already from the nade over towards middle. Definitely a... Shaky round, to say the least. This map very much balancing on a knife's edge here. Could go either way. Nia focused in on this angle. Kit-Kat might be overwhelmed. It spots the head. Perfect aim adjustment. Beautiful headshot. Goes for the second as well. They will be allowed to live for just a little bit longer. Kit-Kat and Nia... Keeping it on lockdown. They don't want to let this one escape. And D7 on the other side of the map. Picking up kills. Taking names. That bomb was hovering over towards A. It's being moved over a little bit. And Nia, look at that. Another one for her. Just Maria and Aurora left. Oh, they want to try to take it flawlessly. Kit Kat going for this kill. We talked about how aggressive they are. Aurora going to make sure that at least one of these guild players is taken down with her. But so much to do. And with D7 closing in from behind, there is no escape. There is only the ability to go forward here into your inevitable demise. And there we have it. 12 <laughs> rounds. Map point. Series point here for guild. I can't believe that she was just spamming the deagle animation <laughs> in the middle of that fight. They were so confident, just no no stress. But now you still have to get it over the finish line. 
There is a bit of wiggle room. Two rounds. But Estrada's back with a four by upon the table. This is, of course, do or die for them. The dreaded O2 in the series awaits them. And it is a beautiful HE to kick this round off. HE to clear the smoke. Not going to spot Aurora, however. Well, looks, however, does not get the same luxury. Is going to have to fall back a little bit. The mid for the time being held very deeply. Maybe an opportunity for Josephine to abuse that. Has a teammate by her side as well. Oh, but... Oh, actually, no, it does work out. It was the point of view of Rana for a second, and that means the orb falls. So now Pollux, you can see, immediately activate it. The one to help out D7 upon that A-bomb site. And KitKat immediately aware of water as well. But now you're sort of stuck in between a bunch of different angles. And it looks like over towards A, they're going to be pushing for information. A bit desperate here to get something going in their favor. And it works out beautifully. KitKat finds one, as Pollux does as well. So suddenly, numbers favoring Guild. As of the time, 30 seconds, they're going to be pushing out, ignoring that incendiary. Making the numbers even once more. It is going to be a retake on their hands as that bomb goes down. Nia already hot on their heels. Connector going to be the play here. A very difficult angle to retake from. Have a little bit of support. They go trade one for one. Tap on the bomb. Maybe stick it. No, actually, not quite. Oh, and now a very awkward fight. D7 knows where both of the players are, but this time Astral is, is too big of a hurdle to overcome. They grab an 11th round. Then march an inch closer for a potential overtime. Overtime is indeed calling. We have one more round of regulation, regardless of what happens here. And this will be the final time out coming here from Guild. I do believe Astralis has one more waiting in the wings, but I will not really have a chance to use it, I don't think. Now the money not looking amazing for some of these Guild players. They are going to have to fight for this with a bit of a broken buy. But we have seen these broken buys thrive for Guild on their CT side. Their opening picks have been absolutely devastating. But Astralis, a lot better form now. I don't know who we saw playing on map number one, but either they've turned their monitors on or a different team has showed up. Because, as we said, this is a map we've seen these two play on before against each other, and it was taken to overtime. In fact, it was taken to OT number two, three? It must have been overtime number three that it was finally closed out in. So a very, very serious affair either way. All looks forced back and immediately accounts in Sanjuri. So it prevents Astralis from taking space towards middle. And instead, maybe eager to get something going towards A, but that is where D7 is playing. We know she's been popping off. Now, only an MP9 in her hands this time around. So she's going to be playing a closer angle right behind the pillar on site. Lovely little gap here. Potentially for Anne to work with. It's just going to back off a little bit. Getting so much time. They're getting a little aggressive, and D7 might be able to catch Mary out here. They don't expect her. Gets the first. We talked about the opening picks being lethal. Is going to actually manage to dodge that grenade. Resmoke coming on through, whittling away this timer. We've seen Estrada struggle with getting up on the bomb sides, often doing so with 30, maybe even 20 seconds left. These smokes continue to make it very difficult, but that was, in fact, pretty much the last little piece of utility that is in the bank for Gil, switching to the pistol, but making it ever so tricky. Anna, oh my lord, what is she doing? Lands another tag upon an Astralis player. Now there's only 15 seconds less. The Seeders will have to make a run for it, but they have a number advantage. 
They do indeed. So much damage done onto Josephine as well. Even more. Kit-Kat's going to mow them down. And look at that. Both of them fall to her A1S. I say the A1S, the FAMAS, sorry. And the defuse, plenty of time coming in. And that'll be 13-11, the series 2-0, as Guild take this map. They look a little bit tired because, of course, that dragged on there. But they are happy nonetheless. What a series. Man, this second map absolutely delivered. And even in the last round, I thought it could really go either way. Then we just had Anna just step up with a deagle. You know, considering that uh, Guilds of Money, that last round wasn't really perfect. We did the D7 with an MP9. And Arna had to work uh, magic with a pistol. And they decide to go to the side with lesser weaponry. And Guild just eats them all up. Incredible, incredible scenes. And even though, you know, oh, it was their map pick, Guild. It took a little bit more. That beautiful nades as well. That's one thing I want to <laughs> highlight is the HE grenade usage has been absolutely grim today. But beautifully done. 13-0 on the first map as well for those of you uh, who may be joining us a little bit later on in the evening or night or morning, wherever you may be watching from. And what a series. What a series. I believe we are, we're also going to get an interview as well. So anyone has any questions, uh, now would be the chance to get them in. Of course, we're on a little bit of a, a delay. So get your questions in early. Can't wait to, uh, to see what they have to say about this one because this second map, it was an absolute nil biter. Now, if we look at the scoreboard, um, I mean, yeah, Guild, once again, pretty solid scores. Though I would have to say, Josephine stepped up big time. Um, she's usually sort of a player with less impact in comparison to the rest of the team. But today, she was really the one grabbing the team and pulling them together. Um, and really trying to uh, keep them into this map. Unfortunately, didn't quite work out. And Marie especially had an, uh, an uncanny, quiet game. Um, you know, we were highlighting in the beginning of uh, of the pre-show how she and Ismo are really popping off and now she was just absent. Indeed, indeed. One thing I do want to say, though, is that Josephine on those entries in the second map got to be something that made it as close as it was because as we saw, map number one, Ancient, they did not get a single entry opening kill between them. Not one throughout the entire map. So I think that really helped them a little bit here as well. Um, they seem to warm up a little bit mechanically as well as it got further into this series. But we have our player of the match ready. You would not be wrong for guessing D7. They are our player of map number one. They are our player of the match as well. So much impact. ADR through the roof. And I don't think we could have highlighted anybody better that really helped them dominate this series as much. Absolutely. The, the fact that she's to get over 100 ADR across these two maps and how close this second map was as well. Um, and, you know, you can you can give her, honestly, any weapon. Any mm. weapon, and she would still deliver. <laughs> That's just how good she is, how solid uh, we have seen her perform and how consistent she's been, not just, you know, now, but for the, the entire season. Is that... Is that the sound of an interview? A, I think we got a very special guest here with us. It is, of course, Pollux coming off that amazing win. Now, that second map was just incredible. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. It was really nice to not go to overtime on this map. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And we saw... So, uh, oh, 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 no, I'll let you go. go. <laughs> I'll let you take away. Okay, okay. So, what I personally wanted to know is how has the, the prep for you guys been going on? Because we had a, a bit of a longer off-season and now steamrolling right back here into ESL Impact. What, what has it been like for, for the squad? And, you know, especially now getting week one out of the way, how do you sort of take things going as Guild? Uh, I think it's been uh, nice. It's been uh, quite good to work with our team. And especially Marta, our new player and our new coach. Um, and I think we had some nerves the first game, so it went not the way we wanted to, but this game for sure went exactly how we foresaw it, except for this close match on Anubis. 
So where do you think maybe the weaknesses were coming in in closing out that map as well? What are you going to be sort of patching up going into the next couple of weeks? I think it's just the uh, normal things we need to get, uh, like standard things we need to practice more because we didn't play too much as five. We need to work on uh, communication, for example. It's a hard part of playing CS to get that perfect communication going. And when we really have the day, it's really good, but like it should be good every day. So we're just working on that right now. And that's what we're going to work in the future on. And, and then just talking in general, what are the goals for the season? Like, you know, what kind of placement? I mean, I mean, surely, surely you guys are going for a potential win here. I mean, we are going for the win. That was their plan. Like the shaky first game was a bit rough, but we hope we can win the next games and play as good as possible. Like we're expecting to win every game, basically. We're not going in to lose or to not do our best. We're always trying to do the best we can. And one final question for me. What was it like when you secured that 13-0 on map number one? What was the energy like in the team? Uh, and how was everyone feeling? Was it very hype or was it sort of, okay, now we've got to get map two down? I think we were very hyped, uh, but we were like maybe a bit too hyped, but it went okay in the end in the Anubis game. It was a bit more rough than we expected after this 13-0. Yes. Anyway, um, is there is there anyone who you would like to thank or shout out here after this match before you leave, we let you go? Uh, my mom for watching the game. Oh. Very thankful for that. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, all my friends that are watching. And of course, I want to give a special thanks to Anna for being our the best IGL we can ever ask for. And she's doing such a nice job. All Incredible. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and good luck on the rest of the season. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Like, I'm. this is just, it's a trend we get to see.